Good morning. Welcome to the Local Wellness Policy Meeting Federal and State Reporting Requirements. We will be sharing with you information to assist with meeting your wellness policy requirements. Today, we have four presenters. Myself, Juanita Bowens, I'm with the State Department of Education. We also have Carolyn Lindstrom, who is with MUSC Bowens Center for Children's Wellness. And the lovely Erica Ears, who's with South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. And a wealth of knowledge, Beth Berry, with the Alliance for a Healthy Generation. Our objectives today are to articulate the federal and state local wellness policy reporting requirements. Upon completion of this webinar, you will also be able to use the South Carolina District Wellness Policy Annual Progress Report. And also, you will have a wealth of tools and resources to implement, evaluate, monitor and meet federal and state reporting requirements. For those of you who have not attended one of our wellness policy training, I will go over USDA wellness policy requirements briefly. If you are a school participating in the child nutrition program, you are required to have a district wellness policy. And in that district wellness policy, you must have a diverse school wellness committee or a CSHAC. They both can serve the same function. And in your wellness policy, you must identify the individual or individuals who are responsible for your wellness policy leadership. Another required component is that you assess, monitor, and report on your wellness policy goals achievements, and updates. In the policy, you are required to have goals for nutrition promotion, nutrition education, physical activity, and physical education. Along the line of your foods, you are to have standards for foods sold and food served. I'm going to repeat that one. You are to have standards for all foods, including food sold and food served on the school campus. You are to have guidelines for food and beverage marketing, and you are to report publicly on your wellness policy assessment, monitoring, and implementation. Upon completion of this webinar, we will provide you with tools and resources to assist you with your reporting requirements. According to USDA, you must make your policy and your uh, updates available to the public. The wellness policy, including any updates to and about the wellness policy, at a minimum, must be reported annually. And then also, you must do the triennial assessment and you must include progress toward meeting the goals of the wellness policy. Now, what I'm going to share with you now, there are two ways to access the local annual wellness policy reporting tool. If you are a SCAPS user, and that stands for South Carolina Automated Payment System user, if you are a SCAPS user, you will access it through the SCAPS program. Most SCAPS user will be those who are in the uh, food service. Non-SCAP users would be all others, your physical education teachers, nurses, and others who are serving on the committee who is not in food service. So I'm going to pause for a minute to access the website and walk you through how to get to the tool. Okay, you are to access the State Department of Education's website, and it can be accessed at www.ed.sc.gov. Okay, and you are to click Health and Nutrition, and that will take you to 
the Office of Health and Nutrition's webpage. On that webpage, you are to click Wellness. Upon clicking Wellness, it will open the actual wellness policy page. Click on Local Wellness Policy, and you would scroll down to the bottom of the table and under additional resources and information. Currently, the link is not live, but it will be live in a day or so. You would click the local wellness policy assessment tool. This is how non-SCAP users will access the tool. Now, let me share with you, for those of you who are SCAP users, you would simply go to Health and Nutrition, you will follow the same steps that we've done for non-SCAP users. But instead of accessing the wellness policy page, you would click on SCAPs. And then payment so that you can get to your logon. If you are a SCAPs user, you should have your logon. Let me log on here for you and show you exactly where you can access the tool. Perfect. Now, when you get into the program, you are going to select the School Nutrition Programs icon. And then you're going to select Applications. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and select Downloadable Forms. You're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page. There are two tools. The first tool is the actual Wellness Policy Assessment tool. And the second item that says LWP AR, APR coding is the Healthier Alliance for Healthier Generations coding tool that Beth Berry will share information about later. So now we're going to actually walk you through the tool. So give us a minute to access the tool. Okay, I'm Erica Ayers with the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, and I am going to walk you through this tool. So a little bit of background on this tool before I get started. Uh, so state agencies must obtain documentation of how school districts are meeting that required uh, annual review of their wellness policy. And so Beth Berry with the Alliance for Health Regeneration and one of our staff team members, she did some research on how other state agencies across the country are doing this and found that many of them created tools that the school districts are completing to make it a little bit easier. The districts have to complete their own tool and it's all consistent across the state. And so Beth Berry uh, used what other states had created to draft the South Carolina reporting tool that our state team reviewed and finalized and we're providing to you today to go over. And this reporting tool, just so you know, it only includes those state and federal required pieces of the wellness policy. And we use those pieces that come directly from the South Carolina model local wellness policy. So you're gonna see that our reporting tool, the format, the language, the um, order of information all aligns with the South Carolina model local wellness policy as well as the South Carolina Department of Education's administrative review it happens once every three years through the Office of Health and Nutrition. We did this so that everything is in alignment with one another to make it seamless and easy for all of us. So again, just to clarify, once a year annually, school districts, your CSHAC, your district wellness committee need to review and if necessary, update your local wellness policy. When we say update, we don't mean you need to go through the uh, board approval process every single year, but maybe what might make sense is having an addendum or another um, supporting document if necessary. Once every three years is that deeper dive assessment, your triennial assessment, um, and that's going to align with your administrative review. And that's really looking at monitoring the implementation of your policy. Um, 
So for the purposes of this webinar, we're really focusing on the annual review and how this reporting tool is gonna to help you meet that requirement. <clears throat> so the purpose of this reporting tool that I'm about to show you is that it's going to, like I just mentioned, help districts comply with that annual review once every three years of those state and federal requirements for the wellness policy. Mm -hmm. And it's also gonna provide districts with a snapshot of where they are with implementing their policy. It's gonna help you identify your areas of success as well as areas where there may be gaps in information or areas that may need some improvement that may need to be a priority for time, resources, whatever the means moving forward. Um, it's also gonna help you prepare for that triennial administrative review. Um, and it's gonna provide our state technical assistance team with a statewide snapshot of where are those successes with the wellness policy and where are those areas of improvement? So at the state level, we know where to pull our resources and what to prioritize. We know what future trainings need to look like. We know what future technical assistance needs to be. So it's best to be as honest as possible when you complete this reporting tool. It's not meant to be a form of tattletale. Um, it's not meant to call anybody out. It's not detrimental. It's honestly so that we can provide people with the recognition they deserve for the things they're doing great in and provide people with the tools, training, and resources that they need where they may need some additional support. So moving along, when you complete this tool, ideally you would do it at your annual district wellness committee meeting or CSHAC meeting. If that's not feasible, then what some school districts are doing they're making copies and they're providing it to those who would know the answers to gather that data. So the food service questions you would provide to your food service director. The physical education, physical activity questions, you may provide those to your district physical education contact or wellness contact. So it's a very comprehensive tool and it's meant to be a team that answers it together. When you complete your tool at the top, you will put the year in which it's being completed. You'll put the name of the school district, and you'll put the wellness contact name and email address. Ideally, this will be the lead of your CSHAC or whoever you have identified within your policy as your wellness policy lead. And now, I'm not going to read this whole tool to you word by word, but I do want to um, highlight some key parts within it. So when you get started, you see the first section is policy leadership. This is exactly what I just mentioned and Juanita mentioned earlier. A requirement is that you must identify a wellness policy lead within your district and their contact information or at least their job title and um, the best way to reach them should be made available in your wellness policy. If this is true for your district, you would quickly, um, easily click on fully in place. There are no need for steps to implement because it already exists and your data source would be your wellness policy. And then go ahead and put the name and or title and the contact information for that policy lead. So you will see for each item in this report that it's a fillable PDF. So you would either put fully in place, partially in place, or not in place. More than likely for partially in place or not in place, you will have steps needed to implement or some possible challenges and barriers to list that will need to be overcome. If it is in place, then you will also need to put your data source. So I'll give you some examples. Public involvement. Question number two is asking if your CSHAC or district wellness committee meets at least once a year. Let's say that you have a meeting scheduled for April 14th, 2019, and today is February 5th, 2019. So you have one scheduled, but it hasn't taken place yet. So you would click partially in place. Steps to implement would be the meeting date. Once the meeting occurs, the data that you would put, your source of how we know that happened, is you would put your type in that you had meeting minutes available. Question three is about having a diverse wellness committee, including parents, students, um, representatives for nutrition, physical education, school health, school board, and the general public, including community members. 
Uh, this could be the same way. You mostly have a diverse committee, but you really need a parent. And so you put partially in place. Steps to implement would be that you have a list of parents that you plan to reach out to to see if they are interested in participating. Once they participate, your data source could be your meeting minutes again with a list of attendees, including that parent, with each person's title clearly identified. Moving along to food and beverage availability, question four is about providing a minimum of 20 minutes to consume lunch after students have received their food. Let's say that you have a rather large school district. You have 20 plus schools and you really don't have a clear grasp right now if this is happening across the board. You know what's happening in your elementary schools, but you're not quite sure about middle and high school. Well, if you're gonna be honest, you would put that this one is partially in place. Uh, steps for implementing would be to possibly the food service director have a meeting with all of the school's food service operators and managers um, to identify their schedules and if possible a data source could be actually that lunchroom schedule to see where that 20 minutes is allotted for food consumption. Moving along, you see we have a section for food sold outside of school meal programs. This is competitive foods and beverages, or some people might um, call those uh, smart snack standards. So making sure that these are in place. And again, you may be more aware of what's going on in some schools, but not all. So an honest answer for you may possibly be partially in place and identifying better ways to get that information. And again, it could be having that conversation with the appropriate contact of how they gather that information possibly through staff meetings. Food and beverage marketing. So that is that new requirement that only foods that are smart snack compliant can be marketed in the school setting. It may be um, realistic to say that this hasn't been a priority for your district in the past, but now that it is a new requirement, it's something you plan to focus on. So you may say it's not in place, but moving forward, we do plan to work on this and to engage, let's say, our school administrators to get their buy-in. <clears throat> District goals for health and wellness, nutrition education. Schools provide nutrition education and engage in nutrition promotion that fulfills the criteria identified by your wellness policy. You answer that as appropriately as possible. Uh, nutrition promotions, question number nine. Moving along, question 10, promote healthy food and beverage choices and participation in the school meal program. Moving along, physical activity, question 11. Schools promote and ensure varied physical activity opportunities such as before, during, and after school, staff involvement, and family and community engagement. So let's give an example for this one. Let's say that you know in your elementary schools, they do a phenomenal job of, um, they have a walking club before school and after school, and that most of the teachers are doing physical activity in the classroom, whether it's physical activity breaks, brain breaks, maybe they're using Go Noodle or other resources available to them, but you don't quite know for sure if this is happening for the higher grades from middle school and high school. So again, you could put partially in place and steps moving forward could be to have that conversation with um, the appropriate persons who cover that curriculum area in physical education from middle school and high school to come up with a plan on how they can provide more opportunities for physical activity before, during, and after school. Let's see. Number 12, physical activity during the school day will not be withheld as punishment for any reason. Let's say that your district has been really serious about this policy for quite a while, and you know what's happening in all of your schools, so you click fully in place. And perhaps your data source is that each school has um, something written by administration saying that they are in compliance with this and that all teachers are provided with uh, better alternatives instead of physical activity for punishment. Moving along to physical education, question 13 is asking if PE teachers use curriculum that's age appropriate, sequential, and consistent with national and state standards. 
question 14 is asking if students, um, all students are provided equal opportunity to participate in physical education classes. Moving along, update, inform the public. So this is what we've been talking about. Question 15, annually, the public is notified about the content and implementation of the wellness policy and any updates to the policy, and that the contact for the wellness policy is provided as well. So let's say that you put your policy and any updates available on your district website and it's easy to access. Then you could say it's fully in place and that could be your data source. Let's say that this school year so far, you haven't provided an opportunity to share this information with the public, but let's say maybe there's an event coming up at the end of the school year and you, at the wrap up, you wanna share this information with your parents. And that could be partially in place if you put the date of your event and how you're going to uh, record that. Question 16, every three years, the district assesses compliance with the policy. This is that triannual review, that deep dive that aligns with your administrative review. Moving along, question 17, records will be maintained to document compliance with the requirements of the wellness policy, including items 1, 2, 3, 15, and 16 above. So if you will remember, question one is identifying that uh, wellness policy contact lead and providing that to the public. Question two is having your CSHAC or District Wellness Committee meeting at least once per year and having um, documentation to show that, such as your meeting minutes. Question three is having a diverse wellness committee, and that could be a list of uh, participants with their title clearly identified, such as your parents, your community members, your teachers. Question 15 we just covered is that annual review and public notification, and then question 16 <clears throat> is that once every three years triennial assessment at deeper dive. If you have if you have documentation for all of these items, then you are prepared for your administrative review by the South Carolina Department of Education. Again, very clearly showing how completing this tool once per, per year is going to prepare you for that review. And at the end of the document, there's one more requirement left to go over. School districts at a minimum must have one additional goal for other school-based strategies for wellness in their local wellness policy. And school districts get to choose what this additional goal is going to be. We have provided some examples for you of some more popular items that have also been, um, they're evidence-based for improving healthy eating and or active living in schools. So you are more than welcome to choose one or more of these if you choose to. Uh, the first one is schools not using foods or beverages as reward for academic performance or good behavior. 20, free, safe, unflavored drinking water available throughout the school day, throughout every school campus. A lot of schools like choosing this one because it's pretty simple to do. If you have um, adequate working water fountains or water stations throughout your school that students can have access to throughout the school day. Question 21, staff wellness. Schools will offer staff wellness programs such as weight management or health assessments. Um, some districts like to do health screenings for their staff. That could count for one of those. And then other optional goals, community involvement. So school allowing community members access to the district's outdoor physical activity facilities before or after school. If your district has the open community use KFA, which is another South Carolina School Board's model policy in place and that can help you meet that optional goal. And then having school partners with local community organizations, businesses, or local hospitals to engage students and their families in health promotion activities. If none of those options tickle your fancy, then you can write your own down here at the bottom, and there's space for up to three, but remember, you only have to have a minimum of at least one additional goal. So one other item I wanna to bring to your attention, um, while we have the reporting tool open, is that you will see a lot of these questions have letters and numbers after the item. And these indicate items that align with the Alliance for a Healthier Generation um, School Health Index or Healthy Schools Assessment. And Beth Berry is going to go over this a little bit more. But again, we want to just show you within the tool that some of these items are going to align with that school level assessment. And so 
it may be feasible in your district to use the mm -hmm. assessment that the schools are completing using the healthier generation tool to answer some of these questions within the district reporting tool. But again, Beth Berry will go over that a little bit more in a second. So a very important question you may have is, when is this tool due? So the online reporting deadline for 2019 is from February 15th of 2019 to March 15th of 2019. We're giving a 30-day grace period with this being the first year that the tool is out there and it's due. And uh, like we mentioned before, you can access this tool at the Office of Health and Nutrition's Wellness Policy webpage or through STAPS. And again, if you can't remember how to find that information, um, just go back a little bit in this recording and we'll walk through it again for you. Uh, once you complete this tool, you do not submit anything via STAPS, but you will submit the reporting tool to the wellness policy email address, which is at wellnesspolicy at ed.sc.gov. And now, Beth Berry will go over some resources available through the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. Okay. You can access the Healthier Generation website at www.healthiergeneration.org. You see that on your screen. And once I go to that, you will see where you can um, log in. I'm already logged in, but you can log in here. It'll say log in or register if you're um, not on a computer where you've previously um, logged in. And we have partnered, Healthier Generation partnered with the USDA. The USDA endorsed Healthier Generation's model wellness policy for districts to use when they were updating their policy. And they also have endorsed our assessment for monitoring the implementation um, of your policy and reporting out your progress. So we're connecting the dots here on how all this works together. The South Carolina School Boards Association also used the Healthier Generations model wellness policy as the basis for our state model wellness policy. About 95% of it is verbatim from Healthier Generations wellness policy. And we know a lot of you have um, used that. So when we are encouraging um, schools to complete the healthier generation assessment, when they go to take action in schools, they would go down to assess your school. And once they get registered, they will be taken to their school's dashboard. My dashboard has a lot of schools listed because I'm working with a lot of schools. And you will have the option um, starting later on today to join um, your district team. We did website updates and that feature hadn't been live, but it is now. So when you join your district team, if you are at the district level, you will see all your schools listed. Um, I'm working with a number of the schools in Greenville County School District. Alexander um, Elementary School is doing a great job. And I can go over and look at their assessment. Or if I'm a team member, I could complete their assessment. You can see here that they have completed 100% of the assessment items. A really great thing is once schools have completed the assessment, they never have to start over again at ground zero. All they do is then update the assessment if any of their answers have changed. We also have an assessment guide that you can download right here. It gives the 
items in a written format with a lot of information about who can help answer those. Um, you see the different um, topic or focus areas here. You will also be able to see the percentage of items in each area that are being fully implemented. As Erica mentioned, with the uh, wellness policy tool, it's good to have your team do this. A school administrator or someone uh, familiar with if your school is implementing the policies of the district would be uh, the person to answer those questions. Nutrition services at the district level or the cafeteria manager could help with those. Um, smart snacks, um, you could get the appropriate person to do that help in PE, the health and PE person. And to show you an example, when you click on um, policy and environment, again, you see for this component, 100% are complete. And down here is the code that Erica mentioned, PO1, policy and environment, item one, do you have a representative school health committee or team? And you can see, yes, Alexander Elementary School has that fully in place. And I could go through every topic area and every item. But we also have a reporting um, snapshot report that we can share with you that will easily um, indicate um, a summary of what your schools have reported. It's very um, important for you to be familiar with um, our resources. And I'm not getting to that at this moment. Let me show you the Get Help. And I'm not getting to that. Um, okay, we'll go to resources here. One of our, you can do that again, you can always click in the search bar and type in what you're looking for or um, go to this at the top of the uh, landing page for Healthier Generation. One of our most popular is the Smart Food Planner. And um, most of you in food service are very familiar that we have the Smart Snacks product calculator. It is the only tool that the USDA endorses for um, schools to determine if a product is smart snack compliant. A lot of schools will have a link to this on their website for parents and staff if they want to know if what they're going to be providing for students is smart snack compliant. They use the nutrition label and answer a few questions and it will tell them whether or not it is compliant. Um, we also have a product navigator. In this, we all the products in here are smart snack compliant. You can enter a keyword, you can choose a category such as, let's say, uh, snack foods. We can filter. I am interested today in ice cream and frozen novelties. And then we will search that and see what comes up. And sometimes there'll be photos, sometimes there will not be photos, but you can see the sidekicks um, have a number of compliant items. If I click on this, it will give me the SKU number um, so I can get all the details for that. Also, um, I was, going to go back to the Smart Food Planner and show you that we have recipes and we also have menu plans. Uh, so it's a wealth of information. And one thing that has gotten folks really excited is we now have a Healthier Generation store. All items in there are Smart Snack compliant. We have partnered with Amazon Business. And any nonprofit can, well, anybody can order from this, but if you are a nonprofit, it will be shipped for free if you order at least $25 worth of products, and it will be shipped within two days. Um, and again, if you have a canteen or um, some other uh, activity or event going on at school and you need compliant products, this is your easy button. There's no excuses for not having um, 
uh, compliant products because they can be delivered to your door. We also have um, online uh, communities and we have a training center. And the training center you can access here or through um, that resources tab that I showed you. This resources tab, and here I go to trainings. Excuse me, let me get back to trainings. And in our trainings, what you will see when that does um, show up is we have a list of trainings that will um, address many of the issues you're dealing with. We have live and recorded um, webinars, things from 10 minutes long about um, alternatives for punishment. Um, other than using or taking away physical activity, um, alternatives for rewards instead of food. We have things specifically for food service staff on how do you flavor your food um, to make it compliant and tasty, um, and how to get an all-star team to help you with wellness at your school. It will also keep a transcript for you that you could use for professional um, development Points. We also, if you visit um, the training center, you will see we have a number of uh, website walkthroughs coming up that will walk you through um, our updated website. And we also have recorded um, sessions on a walkthrough of this smart food planner if you want more information on how to, how to use that. We also can provide a snapshot um, report of your district's progress. We can do this one to two times a year at specified times. Um, and the first page of the report shows in blue um, National Healthy Schools Program in orange schools in the state, over half the schools in the state are participating in the Healthy Schools Program, and in gold, your particular district. And this is looking at the percentage of items that are fully being met on the current assessment by uh, the topic area. And you can see this district is doing very well. Um, for the items, to um, find out how your school is doing, as Erica had mentioned, the codes on the local wellness policy reporting tool. It will correspond to items on this report that are on the school's assessment. The one I have pulled up here, does the school prohibit using physical activity and withholding physical education class as punishment? Is this pro, uh, prohibition consistently followed? 93% of the schools in this district are fully implementing this. So when um, the district is going to answer that on the survey, they can put 93% are, we're 93% fully compliant, and the data source would be a healthier generation assessment. We partnered with the Centers for Disease Control, as Erica mentioned, to use the school health index items that address healthy eating, physical activity, and a few cross-cutting items. These are nationally accepted evidence-based best practices. To request this progress report, you would just go to the help page on the Healthier Generation website and the search bar you can type in get help or on many of the pages you can just click get help and tell them that you would like to have a copy of your district report. You can also contact me and my contact information 
um, will be on the screen again at the end. Um, I mentioned our member engagement or help team. They are there to help you Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can call, you can email, and they exist just to help our schools. Also on that help page um, at Healthier Generation, you can get the directions for how to register, how to find uh, different resources, those kinds of things. We also, you see in the middle here, we have national advisors who are experts in their field who exist only to help you. Um, in food service, um, one of our food service directors was previously the food service director in Miami-Dade um, County School District in um, Florida. Has lots of experience, lots of expertise. Our PE physical activity person is nationally board certified. They are there to help you and only exist to help you. We also have the resource database of over 100 resources that are all correlated specifically to the items in the assessment. So um, we don't just throw things up there because they address healthy eating or physical activity, but they correlate to an evidence-based best practice. And we talked a little bit about the tra training center and our online communities we have for our focus area. Also available for your use is the uh, South Carolina Department of Education Office of Health and Nutrition Wellness Policy page. If you cannot access the Alliance for Healthy Generation tool, all of their tools are linked on our web page. Um, and so if you want to access the Smart Food Calculator, any of the tools that Beth mentioned, you can also access it from our wellness policy page at www.ed.sc.gov. We want to mention some other tools and resources that we thought you would be interested in. One is the USDA Local School Wellness Policy Outreach Toolkit which I will show you in a second. And the other is the Center for Disease Control's Parents for Healthy Schools Guide and Promotion Kit. Um, for the CDC Parent for Healthy Schools, I don't have the link available um, for you to easily access, but if you simply Google CDC Parents for Healthy Schools, the guide should be the first link that pops up. And it provides some great recommendations on how to engage your parents into the wellness initiatives at your school district. So now I'm going to show you very briefly the USDA's Outreach Toolkit for your wellness policy. Okay, so you will see that um, I would say the best way to find this, and this is how I always find it, is USDA wellness policy outreach toolkit but you'll see that the full link is up at the top but it's quite a few characters so once you find the web page it has a wealth of information provided for you maybe you want to have a letter sent to your principals about what your wellness policy is and why it's important they have a draft letter for you that you can use they have parent flyers available in english as well as in spanish they have presentations for parents, so maybe you have an upcoming PTA or PTO meeting and you want to explain your district's wellness policy, you can use that. They have presentations for school staff, so you could do the same thing at an upcoming staff meeting. They have newsletter articles, you could use these within your school, within your district, or maybe you want to use these with your community news. And they also have social media posts. All of these are in editable forms um, that you can use to make. Um, make it appropriate for your school district and your school when you're sending communication out. So I definitely encourage you to not only make sure that you have your updated wellness policy in place and that you're making efforts to implement your policy, but that you're also communicating your policy throughout your school and community. And now we will take you back to the PowerPoint to show you a few more resources before we wrap up. OK, 
Healthier Generation has partnered with Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation with a wonderful opportunity they are providing to fund schools through their WISE grants, Wellness Inspired School Environments. This will fund schools to implement one or more action items on their Healthier Generation Action Plan. After schools complete the assessment, they are um, guided to complete an action plan based on those results. And schools will be eligible for two to $8,000, depending on their size and if they're Title I um, eligible or not, uh, to implement their action items. You see Hannah Miner and my contact information there. We are available to ask questions and to help you with your application. It's a very simple application. And you can find out more, as you see on your screen, at www.wisesc.org. And listed on the slide are individuals who make up the state technical assistance team. You have Erica Ayers, who presented earlier, Beth Berry, uh, myself, and Carolyn Lindstrom, who is with MUSC Boeing Center for Children's Wellness. Please feel free to contact either of us about any questions you have related to wellness policies. Also, don't forget, March 15, 2019 is the deadline for submitting the local wellness policy annual reporting tool. It should be submitted to the email listed below, wellnesspolicy at ed.sc.gov. If you have any questions related to wellness policy, you may also submit the questions to this wellness policy as well. Thank you very much for your time. And we will be sending the link out to all of the participants. Have a wonderful day.